In 2023, Microsoft announced that all search campaigns on the Microsoft Ads platform would be opted into the Audience Ads Network by default. Now, this isn't completely unusual. Search campaigns on Google are also opted into the Search Partner Network, but on Google, you can opt out of them. And as of that announcement from Microsoft, you can't opt out of the Audience Ads Network in Microsoft anymore. Now, for some accounts, most of ours, to be honest, this wasn't a huge deal, but for others, it's been a really big problem. The good news is that unlike Google, Microsoft does allow you to take some actions to improve the performance and make sure you're controlling where your ads are showing up on the Audience Ads Network. So in this video, we want to walk you through how to see the performance of Audience Ads in your account, talk about how you can nail down some of the nitty gritty details and start to exclude those bad placements from your campaigns. To be able to show you the different websites that will pop up for Microsoft Audience Ads, we need to be in a live account that actually has some data flowing through. Otherwise, you won't see anything show up. So that's why some things are gonna be blurred, but you'll still be able to get the gist of what we're looking at here. So the first thing we wanna do is first understand how our ads are performing on Microsoft's Audience Ads Network. And there are a few different ways we can do this. First, we can segment our overall performance by coming down to Network, and here we can see that we have Microsoft and Select Sites, AOL Search, and Syndicated Search Partners. Overall, this account is in pretty good shape when it comes to this. So I'll be honest, we're not gonna see a ton of data flowing through this, but if you first wanna see at a really high level how your ads are doing, and if a lot of your traffic is going to those syndicated search partners, this is gonna be the easiest way to do it. So let's say you've decided that you have a problem and you need to investigate further to understand how we can add these exclusions based on the performance that we're seeing. Luckily, unlike Google, Microsoft is a lot more transparent about which websites are in their audience network and they'll actually show up in a default report for you. So what we need to do is come over in the left-hand column here to reporting, go to default reports. We're gonna skip past most of the reports here and come down to website URL or publisher. I'm gonna customize this report really quick. Come up here to the columns icon. I'm gonna ditch campaign and ad group as well as some of the view through stuff just so we don't have to blur too much out, click save. So you can see that you can customize this report just a little bit. Now the last thing I'm gonna do is extend the date range so we've got more data coming through. Let's make it the entirety of this year so far. I'll click apply. And now we've got a little bit more data to work with. So the way that we're gonna read this report is this website URL column is what we're gonna be looking at for any of the individual placements that we're looking at. Microsoft Sites and Select Traffic, this you're not gonna have any insights to, same as AOL search properties only. These are effectively like saying people who searched on Bing or AOL, those are all gonna show up here. And as I mentioned in this account, you can see that the vast majority of volume is coming here because this account doesn't have a huge audience ads problem. But you're never gonna know until you go check. But now we can also start to see a handful of the other sites that are down here below and what their performance is for each of them. We can see DuckDuckGo has $2 in spend, no conversions. It does have a decent number of impressions, but clicks are pretty low. There's a lot of other things like find.clevershopper.com, go.bargainboom.com, search.pch.com. pch.com by itself shows up here. Lots of different types of websites that are in the Microsoft Audience Ads Network. Now we currently have 20 rows showing. There's one of three. So we've got anywhere from 41 to 60 sites that'll show up here. But you'll also notice this other URLs down here at the bottom. You don't need to get too terribly worried about this because this is a list of any domain that there is no advertising spend associated with them. So they might have impressions, but they do not have any clicks. You were not charged for showing up on any of the other URLs. Now in the interface, you can filter this data just a little bit. You can use this filter option up here based on account ID, the account name, depending on how you're looking at this report. And then you have all of these different stats that are in here as well. So you could filter by conversions. If you wanted to say conversions are greater than zero, click apply. Now this account is only left with the Microsoft and AOL properties, but maybe your account has lots of different sites showing up here. We can X out of that, click somewhere else. We can also add in conditional formatting. So let's say clicks, and then you can apply conditions based on the data you wanna see. So let's say anything with clicks that are greater than 10, we can then come over here, choose a specific color that we wanna see, click apply, 
Now the report has the conditional formatting highlighted, so it makes it easier to see what's going on. This would be a great option for trying to find anything with certain conversion volume, certain CPA, maybe spend, where you want to have still another stat like impressions as the descending number, but then you want to focus on the ones that have a number of clicks. Because here, this highlights pretty quickly that DuckDuckGo has really high impressions, very low clicks. We'll just come over here and click reset, get rid of that. You can see here you can download this data if you want to augment it somewhere else. And all accounts, we are currently only in one account, but if we wanted to adjust this to anything else, you can select different accounts and campaigns, all that good stuff. Now, as I've mentioned a couple times, this account does not have an audience ads problem, but let's say yours does. Let's say, for example, that this Microsoft Sites is actually duckduckgo.com, right? And we have maybe way too much spend and way too high a CPA going to this placement, and we want to exclude DuckDuckGo from our campaigns. The first thing to note is that you can do that, and it's pretty simple. Google doesn't make it quite as simple to get rid of any individual site on the search partner network. This is where Microsoft really shines. They actually make it a lot more simple than Google does. So just because you've probably heard of it before, and it's one that showed up here, we're going to use DuckDuckGo for this example. There are two ways that you can exclude a website from your campaigns on the Audience Ads Network. The first is on the Campaigns tab. You can start by clicking into any individual campaign and then going to the Settings page. We would then need to scroll down until we get to the Website Exclusion section. So let's go ahead and do that. It's down here just underneath the Ad Schedule. And then in this box, you can add websites to exclude at the campaign level. So here, if I wanted to exclude DuckDuckGo, I would just need to type that into that box, then come down to the very bottom of this entire page and click Save. I'm not going to do that because it's not causing any issues right now, but that's how you can apply it at a campaign level. Now, if DuckDuckGo were showing up in all of the campaigns that we had, we're going to need to take a little bit more drastic step. We're going to come over here to Tools, and we're going to come to the bottom of this Advertising, Targeting, and Tracking section to Website Exclusions. Now, if you are in an individual ad account where you logged into it and it's not part of an MCC, you'll be able to create website exclusion lists right from this page. But because this account is under our Paid Media Pros MCC, you'll notice up here that these are account level website exclusions. They can only be created at the manager account level. Personally, I find this really dumb and frustrating, but it's what we have to do here. So again, individual accounts, you'll be able to create something from here. But if you're in a manager account like we are, you actually need to come up to your manager itself. You'll then need to navigate back to tools, go back to website exclusion, and now we have the blue create button up here. So let's go up here to create. This is going to be very simple. You just give your website exclusion list a name just the same way you would for any other account level setting. But in this one, one thing I would suggest is that if you have this website exclusion list and it's only going to apply to one account in your MCC, you probably want to name it with that account. I'm not actually going to create this list and save it and apply it to anything. So example is going to work. But if you have lots of different accounts and lots of different needs, probably make one for each client rather than one for your entire MCC. Just as we did in the other box, we would just need to type in the websites. These are simple to format just the same way you would add any other set of keywords or negative keywords. Just have one per line. Make sure you have everything that you want in there formatted correctly and then click save. Now at this point, we're not done because you can see the list name. Websites in the exclusion list is one and then accounts sharing this list is zero. So since we're in this MCC, we have to go through this other step, check the box, add two accounts, and then we can add to as many accounts as we want just by clicking the arrow next to their name. And this website exclusion list will be applied to all of those accounts. If you wanted to remove them, you just click the arrow back or you could have clicked remove all. That would do it as well. Once you were done, you would just click save. Let's go ahead and apply it to an account where it doesn't matter. So we'll do it to the paid media pros account. We'll click save. Now you can see that it is sharing in one account over here off on the right. If we were to then navigate to our Paid Media Pros account, we don't actually run anything in this account, so there's a lot of errors and zero stat lines. But we could then come to Tools, go back to that Website Exclusions, and we'll see here that we have the example Website Exclusion list that is managed by our MCC. If you decided that you didn't want this list associated with your account, all you'd need to do is check the box here. You could say disassociate, and it will basically just not apply this website exclusion list to this account, but it will not delete it altogether. 
it still lives at the MCC level. So it'll still apply to any of the other accounts that it's been associated with, but you'd be able to remove it from this one. Overall, I've heard some pretty big horror stories about Microsoft audience ads taking a ton of budget and having really poor performance in some accounts. Luckily, all of our accounts look pretty good in this respect, but I highly encourage you to check and make sure that yours are in a good standing. And if they're not, maybe start thinking about applying some website exclusions either to individual campaigns or to the account as a whole to make sure that you're not wasting ad spend on placements that are not performing well for you or for your clients. If you have any additional questions about how to exclude websites from your Microsoft ads campaigns or anything else in the Microsoft interface, feel free to leave us a note in the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the super thanks button.